So we're here in New York City with indie pop singer songwriter DK Lyons. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me here. Uh, playing a show tonight here at Bowery Electric in the Map Room. Uh, played this room a number of times, but I think this is gonna be the best show. So super excited to be here. I know you've done shows here before. What do you love most about performing? Um, I love performing here uh, just because it's kind of it's kind of been like endemic of my growth the last like, year and a half. Where like the first show I played here was maybe in front of like six people, and then every time it's kind of gotten bigger, and um, the crowds have gotten more into it. And I think I've also refined my set more too, and made it more fun to be here for the fans. So it's kind of been like a real growth like area for me, I guess, that I've been able to play here so many times and continue to get better and you know bring on more people each time and I hope the next one and you know each one after that is even bigger and better. So I'm sure you'll be performing your new single, Zoe Does Her Hair, tonight. <laughs> Can you tell us a little about the song and the story behind it? Absolutely. So really excited about my new single, Zoe Does Her Hair. Uh, I originally wrote it back in April, so it's been a little while coming uh, for it to come out, but it's it's been added to some, some playlists and really started to grow momentum on Spotify, which I'm super grateful for. And it's a really fun song to play live. I actually debuted it before it came out, uh, my last show here, and there's kind of this fun like sing-along part to it that everyone got really into, and it was really kind of like encouraging for me knowing it was going to come out after. And, um, yeah, the song itself, uh, it was kind of spawned from a friend sending me Light Switch by Charlie Puth, which I had not heard. And I was like, man, I really like this song uh, and love Charlie, but I was like, I think I can write lyrics that I find to be more interesting uh, in the same type of song. And it's not a knock at all to Charlie, but that, that is where the inspiration came from. So I kind of just started playing around with a, a drum machine and um, a keyboard and then the song came together very quickly and out of nowhere the lyrics kind of fell into place and suddenly it was kind of this song about not full on falling in love but kind of those moments when you know you're about to fall in love. So I, I think I write about that a lot, those kind of in between moments between you know being single, being in love, and breaking up with someone. Um, I find those kind of in between moments more interesting. So that's kind of where it came from and then um, got in the studio and worked with my longtime collaborator Steve Hansen producing and uh, my good friend and amazing artist Emma Ray did the backing vocals and it really just brought the track to life and um, I pretty quickly knew that it was a special one so I was super excited to put it out and I'm just really grateful that the response has been what it's been so far. Um, is there any specific artists that have like really, other than Charlotte, <laughs> Yeah, in terms of artists that have inspired me, um, like long term, I grew up a huge Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers fan. Got to see them 10 times with my mom, so it was a very special thing for us. And devastated when he passed away, obviously, but um, I think he's one of the great songwriters of all time. And the way he writes uh, in a very romantic, specific yet vague way, and I think that's what I try to embody too. Writing verses that are very detailed and put you in a very specific place, but then the chorus is kind of what brings it together and it's a bit more, not vague, but it kind of just more relatable, I think. Um, so I, I've taken a lot of cues from him, and then the 1975 are definitely a huge influence for me, one of my all-time favorite bands. I have a tattoo for them uh, that I got this year. Uh, I've seen them a number of times, and I think um, they really should, like are kind of the model for writing pop songs, but that the lyrics are nothing like pop lyrics, and they make, a seemingly, you know, non-pop subject, it's super infectious, just with the way they do it. Um, and there's dozens of other artists that I, I have taken inspiration from, but those are kind of the two big ones. That's awesome. I love too, like, when artists, and it happens all the time, but when they get their inspiration from those classic artists and um, revive it. Um, so I love too that you're very publicly a feminist, <laughs> and um, so, so we saw that with your song "The Girls of Summer." Um, so what has driven you to be so vocal around that subject? Yeah, um, you know it's the themes that I write about in terms of songs like "The Girls of Summer" or "Katie in the Moment" or "Poster Child" that really focus on these powerful 
women figures that are disenfranchised to an extent comes from just growing up around pretty much only women. Um, I was raised, you know, by my mom and my aunt, and my grandmother, and my sister is very important to me. And um, you know, it's really just around that energy most of the time growing up. And I think, you know, um, just kind of hearing the stories from them and friends of mine, um, and just feeling inspired to write about it. And I think um, it's not done enough where you know male artists that have these platforms, I just don't think they're, they're doing enough to help drive equity, especially in the music industry, which is still so inequitable in so many different ways. And I think it's, it's um, you know, I, I, why would I put out something generic when I could be writing about stuff that I care about and I've seen firsthand and that could also hopefully in some way, um, you know, drive things forward and, and make the music industry more equitable for, for everyone. Music represents everything to me. Um, I've been writing songs since I was five years old, starting with just writing down little song titles. Um, I still have the sheets printed out, albums worth of these song titles that the, the choruses would pretty much stay the same, but I'd rewrite the lyrics every time. And there's videos of me like playing on a tennis racket and singing these songs and, you know, progressed into writing lyric sheets and learning how to play guitar and recording and all of that. But I kind of ran away from music for a while because I kind of had a lot of, negative self-talk like oh you're not gonna be able to do this and it was just always there for me and it was the only thing I cared about waking up in the morning going to bed at night sitting at work every day I was just thinking about music songwriting producing um, and these ideas would come to my head and, you know I, I think I took it for granted for a long time and then the day I stopped doing that and started really pursuing it with more tenacity um, every day that I do it is the best day of my life and the time doesn't exist when I'm in the studio or writing a song and it's just, it's, it's my life. Is there any specific moment, um, maybe when you were growing up, that made you realize that you were like, I have a talent for this or this is something that you needed to do? So in terms of a moment, not necessarily anything specific comes to mind, but just sitting back and looking at the fact that I had a thousand demos sitting there, uh, I realized it was not something normal like every kid was doing. Um, but then I, I think I had to go through writing a thousand bad songs to start getting to good ones. And the moments that I started to really understand that, like I would write a song and like be moved to tears, not necessarily because I wrote something that was like super poignant, but just because like it it, it like pulled that out of me in a way. And I think those were the moments I was like, okay, this is. I'm onto something. This makes me feel a certain way, um, and those are usually the songs that, like, I know are important that I should continue down the path of like bringing them to life. Is there any like one specific moment this year that made you um, just appreciate life, or just something that was your career, like, something that stood out to you? Yeah. 2022 has been another weird year for a lot of reasons, and uh, yeah. a lot of really good things happened. I think I really found an identity and a voice that had been in, in the works for a while, but it feels like it was my most inspired year, and there's going to be a new single every single month next year. Awesome. Uh, and if you've liked anything that's come out to date, starting with The Girls of Summer, there's stuff that's even better uh, coming next year, so I'm super excited about that. Um, but it was also it was all a trying year for a number of reasons. Went through a couple losses, some expected, some unexpected, um, and it's uh, it's just been a reminder of like being grateful for the people that do care about you and that support you, and it's it's the most important thing to put them first. And um, and what I love is that you know uh, they all kind of come together over over the music. Like I've got my mom, my sister, some some really close friends coming tonight. Um, and it's just so fun to be able to share in this with them because it, yeah, it, it, they mean everything. So um, this year was kind of just really putting all that in perspective and making me very grateful to do what I do and have what I have. So do you have, um, what do you have coming next? Anything for January or? So what's up next for me? Uh, I've got two songs that I'm trying to decide which one's going to come in January, which one's February. One of them is very much the strangest song I've ever recorded, uh, but it's really, really fun and catchy, and it's got some disco-y nice. vibes to it. It's got some The weekend vibes, and it may or may not involve a folk coder. Uh, 
effects on my vocals, and it's all about uh, being overwhelmed by social media. Um, That's a relatable topic. It, it is, and I and I wrote it. I wanted to write a song about that for a while. That wasn't like preachy, and what I knew it was right was that it's very like personal to my experience, but it also feels like it's what everyone goes through. Just the frenetic nature of being tied to a feed or like trying to figure out dating apps or you know trying to figure out what's going to work, even as someone trying to put content out and have it do well and wanting to just be rid of all of that, basically. And, and then the second one is much more kind of a classic. DK Lion song if that exists um, uh, and it's called uh, When We Were Falling In Love and it's actually a look back uh, once a relationship has ended and you've had some time to appreciate the good things about it and not being callous and understanding like no matter what relationship you've gone through whether it's friendship, love, family um, you know there's always there's always things to grow from it even if it doesn't go on forever so uh, really excited about that one it's a really sweet almost like Kirish sounding acoustic guitar synth kind of song. Nice. So super excited about both of those. And then a lot more to come after that. Now I'm, I'm really big, as I'm sure people who know me uh, know about music videos. Um, I work in the video production space. I've got a lot of really talented friends that help me out. So Yeah, uh, your videos are always like excellent. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So yeah, YouTube is definitely the, the platform where uh, I'm most proud of the work I'm, I'm doing because it's where I get to it kind of expand the world of the songs and make these videos that really kind of give it a whole other level. So give me a follow, uh, stream my music. Thank you, MNG Blog and uh, Erica for having me. Love the support and uh, hope to do this again and hope, hope you guys uh, enjoy the music and get to come see me live at some point. Hey, this is DK Lyons and you're watching Music Notes Global. Hey, this is DK Lyons and you're watching Musical Notes Global. Hey, this is DK Lyons and you're watching Musical Notes Global. Hey,